Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the second week of the Quarantine Bake Off. I'm so excited that you guys are joining us for the second installment. Last week, we had four amazing plays. And this week, we are finishing up with our last three participants. So we thank you, everyone that submitted and are here to act for us and read these beautiful plays that were submitted to the Quarantine Bake Off. Uh, to recap, for those that were not here last week that are in the audience today, uh, the Quarantine Bake Off was inspired by Paula Vogel's Playwriting Challenge, the Bake Off, where uh, they would discuss a topic and then out of that topic, they would pick five ingredients to write a play on. For the purposes of COVID and quarantine, uh, we are doing this online and they are short plays that are inspired by five ingredients. And the five ingredients that we chose here for this production was a first impression, cherries, lavender, a honk, so the sound, and magic beans. And then for fun, because why not, we added two extra credit ingredients just to have in there. Uh, the number 42, and a Razor Scooter. Today, you're gonna see the last three plays, and those plays are On the Sixth Day by Fletcher Morrow, Hero by KL, and the annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest by Ara Rico. We're very excited to have those. So without further ado, we're gonna get started with On the Sixth Day. If I can have my actors and my stage directions go ahead and turn on their cameras. And one last thing, the lovely Erin Smet is again going to be reading our stage directions for this production. So my actors, if you can go ahead and um, unmute yourselves and go ahead and introduce yourselves on what characters you're reading. Hi, I'm Christian Gama and I will be reading uh, Big G. Hello, I'm Jonah, and I will be playing the angel. And without further ado, let's get started. Title, On the Sixth Day by Fletcher Morrow. Setting, heaven, a bare stage. The angel and Big G enter. The angel is wearing a pair of angel wings. And that concludes today's guided tour through the heavens and the earth. I trust everything was to your satisfaction. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Like all of it. Really, really like what you did with the light. What did you call that again? Day, sir. Love that. Love it. Love it. Such a good name. It just pops, you know? I agree, sir. And the other stuff. The not light thing. What'd you call that again? Night. Night. So mysterious. So personal. So moody. So, so... Dark? Yes, dark. Oh, I love it. Really love all those changes, those changes you did. Day and night and all that other stuff that you changed really brings everything together. Just great. Thank you, sir. I'll leave that in the review. As I'm sure you are aware, however, we didn't change anything about day and night in this iteration. That's right. That's right. Oh, you're so right. I just really love that stuff you did with the lights so much. It's all I can think about for the rest of the tour. Can't stop. I just check out, you know what I mean? Saying day and night in my head over and over again, really savoring how they sound. Of course, sir. I love that part just as much as you do. But as you know, that's not what this iteration was designed for. Of course. So sorry. So sorry. I know you've been working on this for a long time, a really long time. And I know it must be so hard, but you're doing a fantastic job. You've been working on this for... Six days, sir. Six whole days. Can't ask for more than that. And it's getting really close. I can just feel it. But there's just a little something missing. And I think I know what it is. Right, sir. Well, as always, I'll be more than glad to take suggestions at the end. But in this particular iteration, we just wanted to get your first impressions on the updated physics mechanisms. The what? The physics engine. Hands we Big crunched, G, the clipboard. We crunched some numbers and changed some of the fundamental physics of your universe to line up with your request from the last tour. 
Big G is dumbfounded by the charts and math on the paper. Physics? Yes. We figured that a slight change in the geometry of dimensional space would get the intended effect you were looking for. The effect I was looking for? Yes. You requested that we reduce the limitations of the movement of physical bodies through space. I said what? You said you wanted things to go faster. Oh, faster. Yes, yes, that's right. I love it when things go fast, like the little flying rocks you showed me. Oh, I do love it when you show me how things zing around in the big, dark, not Earth part. And when they smash together, who wouldn't love that? I agree, sir. Oh, my humans are just going to go crazy when I tell them about the flying rocks part. They're going to love it. Are there any rocks on Earth, James? Uh, Jonah. And yes, there are many rocks on Earth. Earth itself is... Well I bet there aren't many flying rocks. <laughs> They're gonna flip when they find out that my universe is full of flying rocks, James. Who's Jonah? Me, sir. Right. Uh, well, Jonah, I've given it a lot of thought and thanks to you, I realize what it is that my universe has been missing. What is your universe missing this time, sir? Jerry's. Is that a kind of rock, sir? No, Jonah. Picture this, half grape, half apple, smells great and a small nut on the inside. And if you eat too many of them, you get cyanide poisoning, the cherry. That sounds wonderful, sir. I'll put it on the list. I have a list? Yes, sir. We have a list of all your requests. Oh, well, that's just wonderful. Really smart, good, good thinking. I'm always thinking of things to make the universe more interesting, you know? And when I say always thinking of things, I mean always. I'm well aware, sir. Sometimes I'll think of something super cool, then think of something else super cool, and just completely forget the first thing I was thinking of. I need a list. I'll be sure to keep updating the list, sir. What's on my list right now, Jonah, uh, besides cherries? Maybe thinking about all the things I've already thought of will help me figure out what I haven't thought of yet. It's worth a try, sir. Flips pages on the clipboard. Most recently, you've requested cherries, an overall speed increase, the addition of Jupiter. Is that the planet that's literally just like swirling gas? And it's absolutely huge. They're going to love that one. And the moon's just. Adding liquid as a possible byproduct of fruit. Call the liquid juice. 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 It even sounds refreshing. Magic beans? I changed my mind about this one, Jonah. I don't mean to go back on the bean idea, but I'm not sure about the magic. I think I rushed into this one. Jonah, can you unmagic the beans? I think unmagic beans would work better. Write that down. Alligators. Water lizards. Crocodiles. Water lizards, but bigger, saltier, and meaner. Venus fly traps, lavender. A carnivorous plant with a mouth. While you're at it, make sure it has teeth too. Of course, sir. Would you like to add teeth to lavender as well? What? No, no, no. Lavender is supposed to be the relaxing plant. Teeth aren't relaxing at all. Speaking of not relaxing, are there any birds on that list? There's a very not relaxing bird I thought of, but I can't remember what it's called. The goose, sir? That's what it was. Jonah, you're a genius, I swear. It is amazing how you remember these things. Yes, the goose. Can you do me a big old favor and play the goose noise for me? Of course, sir. The secretary pulls out a phone, uses it. They both look up and hear a horrifying otherworldly wail coming from above. We're going to have to change that, Jonah. Jonah, do you have any other sounds we could use for the goose instead? I've made a couple sounds in my day. Surely there's some unused sound sitting around on the shelf somewhere? I can certainly go take a look in storage, sir. Walks off stage from off stage yelling. 
Which sounds would you like to hear, sir? Just start from the top, Jonah. All the sounds you've got. Give them a whirl. Knock yourself out. Uh, no, not quite, Jonah. Off to a good start, though. <laughs> That's a good one, but it's not aggressive enough. You know what I'm saying? That's a great one, Jonah. Wait, can you put that one on lions? That's a lion sound if I've ever heard one. Makes way more sense than the current one too. Super liony, huh? Keep trying though, Jonah, we'll get there. Wait, Jonah, what was that? Just a sound, sir. It hasn't been named yet. Play it again. <laughs> That one's giving me major goose vibes. Jonah, that or bees? No, definitely goose. Make it happen, Jonah. That's a terrific sound for a goose. Obtrusive and annoying, but also iconic. The angel comes back. I'll put it on the to-do list for the next iteration, sir. Now, is there anything else you need of me before I end the tour? You know, there is. I've been thinking and I've made up my mind. You show me the universe, get my opinion, do your angel business, make it all work, right? Yes, sir. Any angel can make a list, Jonah. But you, you've got something special. You really get what I'm trying to do here, you know? You're picking up what I'm putting down. You've got the touch, that creative spirit. You've got what it takes, you know what I'm saying? Pretend that I don't, sir. I'm giving you a promotion, my friend, to the very top, the highest honor. Sir? My number two, the cream of the angel crop. No more, to no more tours and no more messing with bizometry, my talented friend. From now on, you'll help me bring my vision to life as my personal secretary. What do you say? It'd be an honor, sir. <laughs> you just made my day, personal secretary. Now, we've got a lot of work to do here a whole universe to make, in fact, and I'm gonna need your help. Should I bring the list, sir? Yes, bring the list. You're always one step ahead of me, genius you. Much to do, much to imagine, but it'll be easier with you around, eh? I'll certainly do my best, sir. That's what I like about you, secretary. You've always got my back, real dependable, someone you can always count on. You've got trustworthy written all over you that and secretary. Thank you, sir. Now time for business. But you know that, of course. You're all about business, about results. And that's what I like. It might be the sixth day, but we can't rest until the universe is all done cooking. You get me? I understand, sir. Would you like to take another tour of iteration 42 before we get started on the next? Perhaps it will get your creative juices flowing. That is a terrific idea, partner. You're always full of terrific ideas. Load it up. The angel pulls out the phone, uses it. It will take some time to load completely, sir. Oh, we've got time. Nothing but time. All the time, actually. <laughs> Would you like to continue with the list, sir? You've read my mind. They begin you read my mind. Yep, they begin to meander off stage, talking as they go. Next is carpet. Fuzzy floor, you can't go wrong with that. Next. Grasshoppers. Don't get those mixed up with crickets. Completely different thing. Penguins and pandas. Uh, some animals should just be chill, you know? And give them a similar color scheme too. 
All the two animals get the same colors. Razor scooters. They're so sick. Sure, they hurt your ankles, but it's a small price to pay for that speed and style. And you know how much I like things that go fast. I do, sir. I know you know. That's why you're the only one for this job. We're going to do great things together. I can feel it. This is the start of a beautiful friendship, James. Jonah. Who? Thank you so much to On the Sixth Day and our playwright. Thank you so much. Feel free to give them applause and in the chat if you'd like everybody. All right. Thank you again, guys. It was so fun. All right. And without further ado, we're going to announce our next show. The next show is going to be Hero by KL. So if I can have my actors for that show, go ahead and turn on your cameras. Hello, everybody. If I can have you unmute and go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Adriana Luna, and I'll be reading for Leah. Hi, my name is Hoover Ramirez, and I'll be playing Zach. Hi, my name is Davion Bell, and I'll be playing Zinni. Hi, my name is Luke Podowski. I'll be playing Quinoa, a dog. Hi, I'm Kiyomi Wong, and I'll be playing Martha. And with that, we're gonna get started. Hero by KL. Location, modern day Iowa. Time, pre-COVID. Setting, in front of a building, a room, a cave. Scene one, Layla and Zinni are in front of a building. Zach recognizes Layla and Zinni. What are you witches doing in Iowa? I'm here to find my dad. What's in the bag? My mother's homemade cherry pie. It's delicious. You want some? Are you trying to poison me? Layla takes a bite out of the pie. Hmm. I'll take it. And what size shoes are you? Eh, I'll take both. And strip. I'm feeling your outfit. We come in peace. That's what Beatrice said. Seize them! Martha makes them unconscious and takes them to prison. Scene two. Martha is brewing coffee and tea on the other side of the cave. Layla is passed out. It's over. Where We're am I? Help, help. Is anyone there? I told you this was a bad idea. He feeds you. Ah, where did you come from? I've been here this whole time. For exactly 11 years and 208 days. You don't look like you've been here for that long. Thanks. This has been my home, so you are my guest. Do you want uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. I'm talking to Layla. Tea. With sugar and milk? Uh, just milk. I was talking to Layla. Just milk. You don't remember me, do you? Um, sure I do. You're... I've been waiting for you to fulfill the oracle. Look at the drawings over there. I'm goddess Martha, stuck in a cave. We meet here, you're chained up, you kill your dad, free the witches, become a realized witch, and go home to tell Beatrice all about your journey. What did you say? You're crazy. You're Zinni, aren't you? You're not a go goddess. Because I'm not wearing some robe and sandals, I'm not a goddess. Zinni, go do it for me. Take my advice, ditch the man. He's playing the savior of the story and you need to face this yourself. Zinni has been nothing but helpful. Look at the alternative Oracle. I free him. He kills all the witches. Your father keeps you down here to take my place. Be your own hero. 
Fine, I'll do it. Martha puts on a necklace and Layla unlocks Lay Layla unlocks Layla's cuffs. God is a woman. What about me? I'll come back for you. Scene three. Layla finds herself in a room. Zach is chilling like a villain. You. Hello, Layla. Congratulations. You made it out. You see, I've been waiting for you. Dad? Yes. What are you doing? You married a witch and I am your soon-to-be witch daughter. She used to wear these sunflower shoulder-cut dresses and I fell in love. I did everything for her, but she changed. When she became a realized witch, the only... She only wore Victorian dresses and spent most of her time with her witchy friends and- For a living because of what they wear. Look, I don't kill them. I call people and they kill them. It's easy. Come live with me and I'll spare you. I, I don't even know what to say. This is crazy. Security. Zinni comes out to take Layla away. Zinni, let's go. Layla, listen to your father. Are you okay? He knows what's best for you. Zinni, you've always been like my son. What? 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 You're like a son to me. Oh, right, right. And if you kill her, I'll buy you a Razor scooter. All witches be gone. Use the magic beads on your neck. Oh, right, okay. Layla is about to eat them and spills her necklace beans on the floor. Crap. Zinni dodges it, but Zach trips and then he becomes a pot of lavender flowers. No, you'll always be like a father to me. Uh, what, what, water? Huh? Oh. Zinni waters the plant. She will pay for this! Get her! Scene four. Layla runs to the car in front of the building. Quinoa honks. Uh, uh. Over here. Let's go home. I'm hungry. Zinni is catching his breath. Layla is getting in the car. He's going to kill me. Where's Zinni? Please go, just drive. Open the door. Quinoa! He's trying to take on Zach, my biological father's legacy, and rule Iowa by killing all the witches here. You have to believe me, we have to go. She's right, Quinoa, drive. Zinni stabs Martha. No! Go back, go back. Quinoa runs over to Zinni with the car. Martha! You cannot die on me. I'm so sorry I called you crazy. Layla, get the lavender. Zach voiceover screaming in fear and pain. Now, go in my bag and take out the thermos bottle. Put the lavender in it. Martha drinks the tea and Zach stops screaming. She is healed. Scene five. Layla, Quinoa, and Martha, and the other witches are sitting at the dining room table. I grant Layla Marie Hero the power of the witch. They clap and cheer. Layla, so what are you going to do next? Now that I have my powers, I want to stay here with the family and get strong with you. You must return and break the news. Beatrice will train you with your special set of powers. You can always return. Here, drink some of my tea and count to 42. Don't worry, I'll give some to Kimwa too. Layla is home with Beatrice. Hey mom, I have a story to tell you. Awesome, give it up for our actors for Hero and our playwright for creating it, bravo. Oh, thank you so much, KL, for writing this piece. 
All right, we're gonna have our final play for today, which is the annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest by Ara Rico. So if I can have my actors go ahead and turn on their camera. All right. And if I can go ahead and have you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Madeline Lyon and I will be playing Maisie. Hi, my name is Hoover Ramirez and I'll be playing Charlie. Hi, my name is Chris and I'll be playing Rufus. My name is Luke and I'll be playing Judge One. Hi, my name is Damian Bell and I'll be playing Judge Two. I'm Adriana Luna and I'll be playing Judge Three. All right, and with that, let's get started. The Annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest by Ora Rico. Act one, scene one. The town of Loveland is a small, as, well, it's as lively as a small town can be. It is the 42nd Annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest and the town is preparing with the square for festivity. At the town square, the presentation tables are being set, banners are being hung, and the master of ceremonies is practicing his speech at the podium. MC. Welcome to the 42nd annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest. Another year of cherries galore. Can we forget last year's winner, Guillermo Guzman, taking home the prize of most unconventional with his cherry infused savory meat pie? He can infuse my taste buds anytime. <laughs> Hold for applause. A woman enters in her late 20s, early 30s, Maisie. She wears a Magic Beans coffee shop apron and holds a to-go coffee cup in her hands. She quickly darts across the street while taking a sip of her coffee like it's about to be ripped from her hands, not seeing where she's going. She almost walks right in front of an approaching car. They honk. The honk startles Maisie so badly she fumbles to the asphalt and spills her latte all over herself. I'm so sorry, I, I didn't see. The driver continues to honk to get Maisie out of the way. She looks at the driver and flips the finger. It's a standoff. Yeah, you better keep driving, asshole. She wipes the coffee off herself with her apron. MC, you all right over there, Maisie? Yeah. A man in his late 20s, early 30s, Charlie enters. He whizzes off his Razor scooter, razor scooter to Macy. Maisie, how many fingers am I holding up? Hi, Charlie. Oh, thank God your memory's still intact. <laughs> yup, but I don't have time to talk. I need to get to the store before they run out of ch- She looks at a transparent plastic bag hanging from the scooter's handle. A gleam of red catches Macy's attention. Are those cherries? Indeed. <laughs> Last batch from the market. I'm about to make the best ultimate chewy cherry chocolate pie this time. I need them. Hand them over. Uh, uh, what? But I'm making- the... I, Yes, I know. The ultimate pie, blah, blah. Sorry. Next year will be your year. I need those cherries. But- uh... Charlie. You don't understand. I have been looking forward to this day all year. I finally got the recipe down for my cherry coffee pie. I stayed up all night getting it right, and I slept through the oven timer while the pie was in the last bunch of cherries, almost burnt the apartment down. And I planned to get some more after work, but then Jasmine called out as usual. And well, here we are. So hand them over. You smell- um, Charlie! Lavender? Charlie. Lavender latte. <laughs> mm. uh, lavender and cherry pie, perhaps? Charlie, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, here, take the cherries. I suppose there's always next year. <laughs> Who needs a shiny gold trophy anyway? Not I. <laughs> oh, I could kiss you, you angel. Oh, please. No need for the such things. I love to make others happy. Maisie exits with the cherries and a wide grin on her face. 
and somehow it's you that makes me happy. Maisie, always you, you wacky woman. Scene two, Maisie's apartment kitchen. A mix of flour, baking powder, and sugar are dusted all over kitchen counters. Jars and bottles of salt, chocolate chips, coffee beans, and butter are chaotically spread out on the countertops. An Elton John song, Saturday Night's All Right for Fibeen plays on her record player. She moves about the kitchen like a mad scientist with a dance problem. She swipes her finger across a bowl and takes a lick. Yes, yes, it's perfect. A dance break to celebrate her victory. She dances, she places the pie in the oven a, uh, she falls asleep on her kitchen floor for the rest. She's comfortable. She closes her eyes and finally begins to relax. The record ends. Scene three, a knock is heard at the door. Maisie jolts up uh, out of her sleep. She looks at the oven remembering where she left off. The knocking continues. Maisie pulls the pie out. I'm coming. She unlocks, opens the door, and walks back to the kitchen, all the while pie in hand. Charlie enters. Uh, so I got bored at home, you know, seeing as my pie baking plans went awry. Uh, thought you could use help. Does this look burnt to you? I mean, it doesn't smell burnt. I must say, it smells uh, like, like a heaven's bakery in here. Well, thanks for coming over. She gives him a hug and he looks over her shoulder. Yikes, your kitchen looks like shit. Scene four, the town square is decorated for the contest. 10 contestants stand next to their elaborate pie presentation table. Uh, three judges bunched together at one of the presentation tables. Maisie stands next to her pie with decorations of magic beans, coffee, packaging, and plastic cherries neatly assorted on the table. Do you get a trophy for best decorated table? The judges have been at Jenna Marie's table for like 20 minutes and I doubt it's just for her pie. Look, look, she's totally flirting with the judge. Okay, it's probably best if you just have a seat and relax. I'm too nervous to sit. Plus, who else is going to keep an eye out for these sketchy judges? You don't worry. And Macy begins to dig into her purse. Charlie watches it with curiosity. She finds a loosely wrapped uh, red lollipop, licks it a few times, rubs it against her lips, all the while staring down the judges. I'm not even going to ask. The three judges make their way towards Maisie. She throws the purse down, tries to groom her hair, and smiles. Charlie can't help but to laugh to himself. She gives him a quick side kick then. Hello, judges. Hey, Maisie. Hi, how are you? Great table. Well, thanks for taking the time to try my pie. Um, I'm so excited for you to try my original recipe containing Magic Beans Organic Coffee sweetly coated cherries, butter, and a sugar graham cracker crust. Sounds delicious. Let's give it a try. You don't have to tell me twice. Here, let me cut you a piece. Judge four, Rufus, enters. He approaches the group of judges. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. It's been a day. Well, we're just getting to our second contestant, Maisie, here. Maisie looks up from her focused pie cutting and looks at the new judge. She has seen him before. Yeah. You! She points the pie cutter at his direction. Uh, who? You almost killed me. You came out of nowhere. Oh, it's my fault? Is, is he the guy that flipped you off? Yeah, that one exactly. Should we come back to your table? No, no. Everything is fine. Please enjoy my cherry coffee pie. Each of the three judges get a slice and take their bites. Um, where's my piece? I'm sorry. Um, those who have tried to run me over today do not get a slice. Charlie, would you like to try a slice? Yes, please. Thank you. You're very welcome, Charlie. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make a rude impression. I have had a very stressful day. <clears throat> yeah, well, things really can get messy quick, don't they? Yeah, you should see the state of her kitchen. <laughs> you should shut your pie hole. I'm Rufus, by the way. Maisie, this is Charlie. Would you like a piece? Sure. She cuts a piece and hands it over. She waits for the reaction of his first bite. He spits. Oh, wow. This is, um, wow. What's wrong? I'm sorry, Maisie, but that's not the best piece of pie. What? What do you mean, Charlie? It, it's, it, it is, <laughs> it's as if this pie, it, it, it's an edible. Uh, oh my God. The judges try to politely spit their bites into a napkin. Maisie grabs a fork and digs right into the pie dish. She's deeply regretful. How, how did it? How did this happen? Sorry, hun. These things too do tend to occur. Maybe you mix up the ingredients. Anyways, it's just a pie. Don't sweat it. The judges move on to the next. That tomato and cherry, cherry savory pie has my name on it. Hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'll take this stuff back to the apartment, okay? Uh, just take a break, you deserve it. Thanks, Charlie. Of course. He looks at Rufus consoling Maisie as he walks away. Scene five, Maisie and Rufus sit on the curb outside of Mandy's ice cream and sweets. Maisie finishes up her cone and Rufus eats out of a cup. Isn't it funny? You work so hard and for what? I have this tiny apartment, a sucky job, disappointing my parents one day at a time. I just thought maybe they'd actually be proud of me if I accomplished this. Silly. Life's a bitch, ain't it? Cheers to that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a pie. Who cares? Sure. Hey, come here. He puts his arm around her shoulder. She's a little stiff. There's an awkward silence until. I'm fine. I'm a big girl. That's the attitude. Now, how about you and I have a drink? Joyce Pub? I'm not really in the mood. I'm, I'm tired. All right, well, how about tomorrow night? Get your beauty sleep and let's go out. Can I call you? Sure. She takes out a pen and writes down on his hand. 314-159-2653. Nice. Talk to you soon, Maze. Rufus exits. It's Maisie, asshole. Scene six, Maisie's apartment. The Elton John record plays Candle in the Wind on the record. Maisie enters. Charlie is singing aloud as he cleans the kitchen. And it seems to me you live your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to queen when the rain sets in. Charlie. And I could have liked to have known you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend never did. Okay, she sneaks up to Charlie and grabs a rubber spatula for a microphone. Goodbye, Norma Jean. You scared me. It's my apartment. Well, not right now. It's not. It's my stage. <laughs> Maisie laughs at his ridiculous uncoordinated dance and joins him. He spins her and slowly dips her back like he's rehearsed it a few times. Their eyes lock. They lean in for a first kiss. Charlie pulls back with a funny look in his face. He kisses her again. Your lips taste like cherry lollipop. 
Would you expect anything less? Give me my sin again. She wraps her arms around him. They kiss again. End. All right, everybody. Thank you so much to the cast of the annual Mary Cherry Pie Contest and Ada for writing it. Thank you so much. And that will conclude our Bake Off. Oh my goodness, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out to watch this. This has been quite a journey for everybody. And what a creative and fun adventure it has been to see so many different pieces created from five simple ingredients. Who knew how many stories were going to be out there from different things, you know? It's nice to see how everyone's mind works. It's really cool. And thank you to my actors who really wanted to participate and bring these stories to life. I appreciate that. Um, that being said, we are done. So you are free to go. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And thank you for supporting us. Bye.